I first started the hobby when I was around nine, ten years old. I've been in the hobby for sort of 15 years now. I was quite into go visiting the koi shows when I was younger. There was just something so mesmerising about the koi swimming around in, in, in the ponds and yeah, I'm just a, just a crazy koi enthusiast really. I've just, the koi bugs just got me really. Yeah, so my dad started off the pond that we've got behind me now. It's been here for around 25 years now. And then when my dad was looking after the pond, there was just a, a mixture of ornamental fish. So there was um, Israeli koi, there was like golden tench, there was just just an average pond fish. And then when I went to a koi show, everything changed. I was just blown away with these massive koi swimming around in a koi vat um, and then my hobby just sort of started from there really. Yeah so there's uh, various breeders um, in the pond, there's Marahiro, Marasai, Hirasawa, a Hyatt series or Marasai, the Kajaku is from Afuchi, there's, uh, there's quite a wide range, there's an Issa shower in the pond, there's quite a variety of koi in my pond, to be honest. I'm not a massive Go Sankey fan, so I like all the weird and wonderful koi. All the quirky stuff, I think, is just, it's just something fascinating about not your average, like Kohaku, red and white, and Go Sankey, Showa and Sankey. There's just something for me. I, I'm more into like Asagis and Kawari Mono type fish. My pond behind me is uh, just over 5,000 gallons. Um, there's a Nexus 300 that has been on the pond for quite some time now. Um, it is actually one of the original Nexuses. Um, there's a lot of maintenance involved with that. To be quite honest with you, I'm not a big lover of drums, to be honest. Um, I know that they've got a lot of benefits due to maintenance and stuff, but um, for me, I just enjoy the pond maintenance side of the hobby as well. I've also got a midi sieve and uh, a three-tier shower. My pond is also pump fed, so it's not got a gravity um, bottom drain, it's got a retro drain in the bottom. Um, if I was to do the pond again, then I would potentially have um, a bottom drain um, and also a window as well. I think that would just be such a nice um, add-on to the pond, really. Um, originally, when we built it, was, it was 3,300 gallons. Um, it's got a, a massive surface area, as you can see behind me. It's, um, it's quite, a, quite a nice sized pond, really. Um, I've got various plants um, all around the pond. Um, I've planted most of them myself as well, to be honest. The pond has matured quite nicely and to be honest with you, I think it makes my pond look really quirky. It's not your normal conventional koi pond. It's it's something quite quite different. So I've got um, bonsai trees. I've got a lot of shrubs and um, aces around the garden. And I just enjoy the gardening side of the of the hobby too. So making the pond look, you know, pretty special. I think with the surrounding around the pond, I think it really sets the pond off. A lot of people know me in the koi world. I'm a bit of a koi crazy guy, and uh, I just I just love everything about fish keeping, to be honest. It's just, it sounds strange to say it, but it's, a, it's almost like it's running through my veins. It's just, I've been brought up with a koi pond all my life, and it's just something that I've really um, got attached to, to be honest. A massive part of my hobby as well is the social aspect of the hobby. So um, I've met various koi keepers from, you know, your, from your average koi keeper to koi keepers who keep really high quality fish. And to be honest, there's a lot of really, really nice people in the hobby. Um, and I, I enjoy quite a massive part of that. I mean, I'm a part of a koi club as well. I'm part of Nottingham and District Koi Keepers Society. Um, and I think that adds on so much, um, so much to a koi keeper really, because um, joining a koi hobby, there's a lot of advice there from experienced hobbyists. Um, 
I just think it's brilliant. You get to go on loads of pond visits and see loads of koi dealers around the country. It's just a brilliant part of the hobby, and especially in summer with the barbecues. I mean, look at the ginrin on that. It's a, a beautiful little ginrin, Chagoy. Um, this was from quite a local koi dealer um, in Derby, to be quite honest with you. Um, it was from uh, First for Koi in Derby. I brought this at the, later on uh, in the year, last year, sort of August time. Absolutely stunning. The, um, I'll show you the, I will show you the actual ginrin out of the water. Now it's time for one of the big girls, I think. So this Sorogo is around 10, maybe 11 years old now. Um, she's quite a big koi. Yeah, so I've actually had this off um, a fam family friend um, who was closing the pond down. Um, I believe this is 11 years old now. Um, and it's from quite an old uh, bloodline in Narita. Um, I say it's a Saragoy, I actually think it's an Achiba. If we look at the... If you look at underneath the belly, it's actually got a bit of a Achiba in it. This is a bit of a jumper, this one. So we've got to be a bit careful with this one. I mean, look at the, uh, the fuca in on that. It's absolutely stunning. This is a core that I had late last year. This is from Marusai. I mean, look at that, it's absolutely stunning. Such a lovely example. That is uh, Nisai, so two years old. It's got such a lovely clean head as well for the variety. It's a really good example. I'm hoping to show that as well at some point in the near future. So I've been keeping fancy goldfish now for around five years. Um, all of these have come from um, Andy at Westview. Um, I highly recommend anyone who's uh, wanted to buy some really nice quality goldfish from Andy. Um, I just pick these the same sort of way as I do with koi really. Um, if I like it, I buy it. So yeah, there's some various breeders in here from the likes of um, Meng in Thailand. And th there's quite a few different um, varieties of goldfish. So for example, this is a, an Aranda, this one here. And then this one's a, a, a ranchu, so that's a different type of goldfish. So it's what on the head it's called wen growth. So as it gets bigger, it will develop a wen. We've also got um, a broad tail ryukin here, which is quite a nice fish. I just sit in here and watch them at night time. So yeah, I'm just a, a bit fish crazy really, to be honest. But yeah, these are all quite young fish, these ones, so I'm hoping to grow these on a little bit. I feed these mainly Saki Hikari. I think they're just uh, quirky little fish, really. I've just, I just went somewhere and seen them in, a, in, aquat in an aquatic place and I uh, was quite blown away with them, to be honest. There's a lot that can potentially go wrong with koi keeping and I think, if I'm being quite honest, it might be worth joining a koi club. Um, or even um, speaking to experienced hobbyists that have been in the hobby for such a long time because um, all the help that you'll need, I mean there's a lot of koi forums out there that are willing to help people, um, you know there's a lot of people in the koi community across all platforms, YouTube and stuff who have been doing it for such a long time. Um, I just think it would be really really good for, for someone to get some advice from someone to start off with. Um, the worst thing you can do is go out and buy a load of koi for your pond that's not even got a mature filter because that's just a disaster waiting to happen. 
Um, I would take it very slow and steady. Um, I would add fish gradually over the course of probably a couple of months. Um, and I wouldn't go too um, chaotic buying fish. So I wouldn't buy loads of koi to start off with because there is seriously a lot of things that could go wrong um, in this hobby. And my advice to a new koi keeper is definitely to do research. Um, I think it's just something that you need to do really, um, especially with keeping koi because there's a lot that can go wrong, parasite issues, water quality issues, um, and you've just got to keep on top of it with the koi hobby. But once you've got that, it's absolutely fantastic. It's, it's such um, an enjoying hobby to, to do. It's just, I mean, it's t I'll be quite honest, it's taken over, over my life now. So um, it's a big part of who I am. So I, I just love everything about koi keeping. And um, Koi Talk magazine, I think, is absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm quite a big follower of uh, Koi Wholesale, Ricky and Chris. And I think what the guys are doing um, for the hobby is, is amazing, to be honest. I think it's going to push the hobby into, um, well, into the modern world. I think, if I'm being honest with you, the, the hobby's kind of stuck. Having a magazine back in print again is really, really good for the hobby, and I think, I think it's going to help push things forwards. To be honest, um, we used to have a magazine quite a few years ago called the Koi Mag, and a lot of people used to enjoy reading that on a monthly basis. And I just think it's brilliant. Um, to be honest, I think it's just going to help so many people out in the hobby, and there's a lot of really good advice in it. Um, and who doesn't like a magazine? with pictures of Koi, it's absolutely brilliant.